Commence primary ignition. I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly. What a piece of junk. Enterprise, this is the captain. I got a bad feeling about this. It's all part of the plan. Engage. Welcome back to Podcast 2 for 1. I'm your host, Donovan Thompson, with my co-host... Daniel Wingfield. And today we are talking about not Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Yes, at, at the time of this recording, well, we haven't seen it, but by the time you listen to it, we will have seen it, and you'll have to wait for our review. It will be coming out very, very shortly, and it will not be... I almost said it will not disappoint. Dude, I'm fucked up right now. I, we just did a podcast. I'm, I, I'm ki- kill, ki- <laughs> killing the ending here, or in the beginning here. You told me an embarrassing story in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for saying we'll that, save that We'll live. save that for the bonus <laughs> episodes, though. Yeah, yeah for, our pa- for our, our Patreon. For our too, Patreon too. that doesn't fucking exist. Story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, anyway, welcome to Podcast for One. Um, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button notification bell. That way you're up to date on all future episodes of Podcast 2 for One. YouTube.com slash 2 for One Studios is the best place to consume the content. There we have Podcast 2 for One every week, of course, and 2 for One Joe live every Monday at 9 a.m. Central with typically Luke Irvin, myself, and Joel Williams. And, of course, if you didn't know, and you probably didn't, let's just be honest here, we are sponsored by Kapow Comics, located at 4047 East Kill Avenue in Sherwood, Arkansas. There they have comic books, collectibles, graphic novels, and, of course, special guest appearances throughout the year. And if you are there last weekend, you probably would have saw Lou Ferrigno, a.k.a. the Incredible Hulk from the 80s TV show, and you could have got an autograph, but you didn't show up because you don't like comics and you don't support our business, but you should. You should do that. Indeed, yeah. And of course, kapow. Kapow, yes. kapow. Daniel, mm-hmm. our last podcast we had Halo, and we, it sounded like mm. I I went in going going in to defend it, and I quickly did not do that, and come <laughs> out come out on the other end with you. And um, I will say that Moon Knight, though, mm. I love this show. And yeah. we have watched all six episodes now. You just finished it. I know Travis has also watched them all. And, dude, like, it is so nice to, like, have a show that just typically all is keeping you, you know, in suspense. And it, it means, like, it's surprising you. It's got amazing acting yeah. in it. Um, the show doesn't 100% stick the landing at the end. There's a few things I would have changed. But overall, I think it's my favorite Disney Plus show in terms of MCU, and I think that I'm just excited we got this new character. I'm very happy we have Oscar Isaac in the MCU, and it makes me, A, it's just a fun thing to watch, and I think I'll watch this multiple times now, especially gearing up for whatever crossover events we have in the future, and also I'm just super excited to see what they do with him next. What's your general thoughts on Moon Knight? Yeah, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, I think it is definitely it, it. You know, I still have Wandavision. I think at my top MC Disney Plus, um, it's either on par with it, maybe maybe slightly underneath it, but it, maybe not. I, I, I could I could swap them. I, I could have Moon Knight slightly above Wandavision. I thought um, it wasn't perfect. I thought it kind of lost a little momentum in some of the middle episodes, um, mm-hmm. but that the big moments, the big reveals, and um, those were all great and really good. I, I did like the ending, especially the after credit scene. I know you texted me and Travis and were like, I thought it was good. And then the after credit scene actually made it 10 out of 10. And I, and I was a little skeptical um, because I think I was also anticipating an after credit scene. that was like a cameo scene for a different character. Mm. And I was like, that's sorry. Then, if yeah, I, no, yeah. It, no, no, it was great. And then I think um, you're right. It, 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 that, that when that happened, it was like, Oh shit. Yes. Like I'm, this was great. Um, and I think even in those middle episodes where I thought maybe just some of the, it got very plotty or it got very, um, just got a lot of exposition dumps a couple times that, that just weren't incredibly interesting. But what carried it was Oscar Isaac's performance because that never wavered. And that, and I think that's even true of like WandaVision with like Elizabeth Ol- Olsen and, and even Paul Bettany's performances. I think that's true a lot of Loki with uh, Tom Hiddleston's performance that, yes, we did have some episodes where the plot just gets a little bit, sometimes a little cookie cutter and then other times just a little 
boring in that way. But when you have these such strong performances from such talented actors, it can work. And it, and it sometimes doesn't matter that much. And then I think when it did get to the big reveals, like the episodes really five and six mainly, um, it it stuck those, the, the reveals to me felt super big and significant. And I felt like I didn't lose enough momentum that I wasn't interested in those anymore, I guess. And so, yeah, I thought it was really, really good. Um, I thought it was shot really well. I thought um, the, just the shot design and the shot choices were all very intentional and very, um, they, they, they told a lot about characters and what they were going through with the shots they chose. And I think that's, that's the ultimate version of cinematography for me is where you're getting a bunch of information without having to say anything or without an actor even having to perform yet. Um, and it felt like a movie. It did. It did feel like a movie with, with be, the cinematography felt movie level for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Fantastic show. And, and I think perfect six episodes was perfect. I don't think it needed any more. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a case you could argue that it could have been done in five, maybe with a little trimming here and there, but still overall, I thought what a fun show that got, that gets to explore, you know, it's kind of like guardians where we get just a whole new flavor out of this show. than we get out of anything other, anything else MCU, these, you know, the Egyptian aesthetic, the Egyptian gods and um, the whole like afterlife that it, like afterlife ideas that it explores. I think it's all just so fun and unique feeling to anything else that we've had. And I think that's always, that's what the MCU needs to keep doing to stay relevant. They've got to find new ways to change the flavor up to give us something that we haven't seen yet in the universe. So. No, I mean, I, I'm loving everything you're saying and I'm, I, can't say it any better probably i mean i'll say one thing it is interesting about the six episode count i think you're right they probably could have um trimmed some stuff down in some areas and maybe expanded some stuff in other areas um but it is interesting also that it feels like marvel and uh not, not so much the mandalorian and star wars but marvel particularly they're just locked into the six episode format um, I think What If may have like eight episodes or something or nine I episodes, a weird think count. WandaVision was like eight, maybe. Was Wasn't it? it? That eight one might be. That, yeah, that one's also a little different because they had like short 30 minute episodes. The first episodes were really short, yeah. Yeah, and then they end up, I think Falcon, Loki, um, Falcon was Hawkeye. Six. They're, all, they're all six, and so is Moon Knight yeah. six. So you kind of wonder like why. Maybe it's, maybe it's broken down into some like. Uh, shareholder meeting or something where like we need six weeks for maximum exposure or something and so sure. that's kind of where they've settled on um but no you're right i think again oscar isaac is he's acting with the majority of time against himself and yeah. that and it, yeah. and it feels like two completely different characters and just the way he can switch his facial expressions his accent his body language it's like a master class in, in acting, and it's pretty incredible. And again, kudos to Marvel for locking him down and giving him like a really cool-looking hero mm -hmm. in like an interesting way of like of exploring the origin story. And you're right, yes. the flavor is just so different. Someone with, um, you know, DID, you know, it's, and you can do so much with that. And they did a lot of cool things with structure and like withholding information from us and kind of and, and delving things mm -hmm. out. I don't really, I'm not super interested in like breaking down every episode like we typically sure. do. I've kind of want to hit like just general thoughts on the whole show. But mm -hmm. I think a lot of cool things here. One, because we've only talked about the first episode with our with our audience. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's great that Steven has his own Moon Knight costume, Mr. Knight. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, you know, like I generally want the coolest thing possible, and, and Moon Knight is the coolest one to me, my opinion. But I think it was a cool and clever way to kind of give make them separate, even in the alternate identity. Yes. And yes. they also feel very they feel very different too in the way they fight, just just like the characters uh -huh. do. Uh -huh. I love his love interest, and I love the mystery there involving yes. him. Um, a trying to figure out how long he's been Moon Knight, trying to figure out, mm -hmm. um, you know, what happened to her dad. I love the mummy episode when we had like some horror elements and I was like, man, like cause the 1999, the mummy with Brendan Fraser is one of my favorite movies yeah. of all time. And you hundred percent know that was a huge inspiration in this had to be. Oh yes. And that's just a fan. It's a, it's an Indiana Jones ripoff, right? In the best possible way. Absolutely. And, um, 
That's fantastic. Ethan Hawke, even though he doesn't get a whole lot to do, he just has a yeah. presence about him. He's a fantastic actor, and he really doesn't get a lot to do in the last right. episode, but that's kind of almost on par with some of these Marvel characters. They kind of end up becoming like a physical force versus uh, something else. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Loved, loved that. I think I think they're just he's just a great actor. He's just a fantastic actor. Fantastic, yeah. Yeah, really, I will really say really. that I, I missed, you know, I wish we had some more Moon Knight. It's called Moon Knight, and I love the... Love the costume. I love when he actually fights um, because I just want to see that kind of stuff more and more. And uh, I feel like that was a little light for the show being called Moon Knight. But Mm. I do feel like um, it was a wise choice to spend time with Steven and Mark Mm. versus just having mindless action that, as much as I would have loved it, like I think it was smarter to do the opposite in this particular case. Yeah, I I would agree. I think especially those kind of like episode four and five, I think especially five was like all about all kind of set in that mental institution slash being on the boat to um, the afterlife kind of thing. Yeah. Um, And I thought, I think you're right that like when you're doing a character with something like DID, which I think also, I just think it's great having a superhero that has DID because I feel like in superhero literature, most of the time, like the villains are the people with severe mental health issues, right? You know, like sociopath or psychopathic or like like um, schizophrenic, like that. That's all kind of things we associate with, like the Green Goblin and um, the, the the Joker. You know, these other kinds yeah, of Two Face, really classic. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And so, um, which Two Face, I think, would probably be classified as DID as well. 100 percent i think so too and, and he kind of it's kind of so, it's in uh, his name you know so yeah right exactly and he yeah exactly so i think um maybe not necessarily how he was portrayed in like the nolan trilogy but the classical right. portrayal of him 100 percent um, would, would be that so i would say um it's really nice to have a hero character a good guy being like being someone that has this major health issue which i think um just normalizes it a bit more just in terms of even culture and like it's just it's just good we need more of like let's show people that aren't bad that aren't like uncontrollable murderous freaks which you might could argue new moon knight is a little bit at least one of them is um Mm -hmm. that are are just dealing with their mental health issues and just have to find a way to work with them in order to like be who they're supposed to be and uh i thought the explanation and how they uh, i was watching with my wife who is a therapist and does work with a population that a lot of her patients are DID. And I think she was even, she felt like they did a good job with how they portrayed how he got it, like the circumstances that took place. And like, that is often such a classic example of, of DID showing up in a child is when something traumatic like that happens or they're in this abusive home and they basically create this other personality to protect themselves. And, yeah. and it's, it's really, it was beautifully told i felt like that all that stuff and like and even i really love the conversation that mark and steven had like once they've realized and like once i guess once steven finds out what's really going on finds that he's you know that mark was the original and that steven was the the creation the the alternate personality that saved him and i thought it was so beautiful how mark said like you saved my life like i i wouldn't be here without you and i think that's such a that's such a more beautiful way even to look at mental health issues it makes it's it's a more curious way it's not oh like this bad thing happened to you so you got broken so like now your brain doesn't work right because you know you couldn't handle what went on and i guess to some degree that is true or from a certain point of view that is true but i think looking at it as more like oh no this was the brain like finding a way to survive through what what because of what it went through at the time it couldn't have survived what the just the, the trauma and then the abuse the neglect all of that that was involved in it that wouldn't have survived and so i think it's this really cool way of framing it as like hey like this is and and, and it's also kind of like this is also kind of a part of the superpower now this ability to switch between Mr. Knight and the Moon Knight. And I loved how quickly they were doing that in the final oh, yeah. episode. Like I can just imagine how like that there's just so much even comedic potential in, in that that I think 100%. could be explored in the future as well. 
Um, I can just imagine yeah, Thor yeah, and Moon Knight talking, and he's like switching back and forth, and Thor's like, "What the hell's yeah, going on?" Like I can hundred yeah, yeah, percent see people that. People are like really think there's two people or something, or like he's yes. on the phone with somebody and he keeps switching, and he thinks they're just handing the phone back and forth or something. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. No, but and I just think I'm just I'm I was curious, I was hopeful for how they would portray DID, and I think. I'm not sure they could have done it much better in my eyes. And I think that is a, I think they deserve uh, some, some credit for that because I think that's a hard thing to do. And I think they did it really well. No, I think that's awesome. And, and I think the episode you're, you're talking about particularly episode five, I believe, or yeah. episode yeah. is it five. Yeah. So, um, I, I, you know, obviously things kind of come to a halt and have to deal with this, um, this yeah. issue of balance, so to speak. And it's obviously we, we kind of anticipated the the idea of like we're going to get a big flashback episode and see what all that happened, um, and I love how they Which I love I how say, they editing the techniques of like transitions and, and revealing information I thought was great I love the Stephen Grant aspect of like the old Indiana Jones TV show yeah oh man fantastic and we got a hint of that I I I you know they we one of the episodes early on opened with a clip from that TV show yeah but we got no context for it yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. It was, and was it was it actually was it? I can't, I'm trying to remember. Was it actually uh, um, Oscar Isaac portraying that uh, in in the in the, in the show? Sh um, I don't know. He had the, he said the I'm Doctor Stephen Grant. Like that was the big like. I think of, I think that's the, the it. intrigue about it. He just had yeah. that name. And there was something also that during the episode, I was kind of a little worried because it seemed like the mom was just like too extreme. Like in, mm. in the way she was treating him, but there's a line in there at the end that says he's like that's not how it actually happened. Like and he's like, well, like basically saying that like his brain, that's his that was his perspective as a kid. And like he also acknowledges like it wasn't like that exactly, but the trauma kind of made him feel like it was like that all the time, and that's how she felt mm. all the time. And there was a line in there that's like, oh, this kind of this totally fixes all the issues I had with that episode of like the mom being too much almost like it's like comical how bad and mean it was she is a little bit and, and i do feel like there was a there was a side effect of just the condensed nature of it like they were yeah we got this flashback in like maybe like total like 10 minutes of screen time or less like if, when it if it was smushed all together how many parts it was kind of flashback to um and I, I do agree that felt a little unnatural i didn't catch the line you're talking about yeah, um, yeah. No, as soon but, as he said it, it was like whenever they were walking outside, um, um really right okay, before he yeah. breaks down, um, yeah. from like in the street, and um, he said a line. I was like, oh, okay. Well, they they totally acknowledge what's going on here, and like it explains mm -hmm. why she's doing, like why the show's presenting her in this way, like this really harsh, harsh way. Um, yeah. and um, no, I thought that was fantastic. Um, I do want to talk about Conchu. I think that his sure. presence in the show is always great. It, and again, like, which is also, he's really just like a, not talking, we'll talk about Jake Lockley here in a minute, but he's a fourth personality, right? Inside Mark. So he's, you're also getting him when you get Moon Knight. And he's very snarky, has a very particular point of view that's very, it feels very godlike, right? And his, like, yeah. na his yes. narrowness. And yes. um, I love the actor portraying him. And it yeah. was just uh, fun and, and, and seeing, like, he's also willing to manipulate people for what he considers the greater good and um it adds another layer and makes moon not even more complex it does i think that's my favorite part about him is that he it, it ties moon knight to this will that is greater than him that he to some degree has to obey i mean it, it's a little unclear like it is sometimes he seems to be able to like do what he wants and it, against Khonshu's wishes or like against his advice or something and then sometimes you know especially at the end with Jake Lockley it seems that that is not the case that Khonshu has some sort of yeah. direct control over him which just makes him more interesting because he is then becomes this good guy that is in under control of what I would almost call more of like a, a neutral force I don't feel like Khonshu is necessarily evil or good He's just kind of dedicated in a neutral like way. He's kind of dedicated to this idea of justice and it is kind of rigid in that idea. Like you said, where it's just like he sees justice a particular way and he will, he, he was not satisfied unless it is carried out fully in that way. Yeah. And so I do feel like he's this kind of gray character, which is just makes the character of Moon Knight and really like, whatever his next story is or like what the continuation of his his journey 
just really interesting. You brought up the idea of choice, and there's something particularly in the end that it's, it's probably my only big flaw yep. in it, which we'll get to in one second. I do want to mention um, Layla again and her yeah, eventually becoming great. the Scarlet Scarab. And mm. uh, I think, you know, she, it's a great costume. I like the powers. I like that she, you know, we kind of talked about, I think, in maybe text, like, do you think these other avatars will show up and get people powers or whatever? Right. And they end up doing it in a great way because she was ar- already an established badass, like Indiana Jones, um, Tomb Raider, Laura Croft kind of person. And I think, like, I'm I'm excited to see them both team up and be superheroes. And there's that moment where she's like, are you an Egyptian superhero? And she's like, I am. It, it's a little a it's a little on the nose and a little, like, whatever. But for me, I was kind of like, you know what? This actually, I really like this. This is kind of, this is kind of yes. the thing that I like. And I'm okay with this. Like, I like this. I liked it. I thought that line was... It It was on the nose, but I think it was like... it. It's okay. It still worked. And I think it kind of worked at this meta level, too, of like... We're getting more superheroes that are representing other yes. peoples and other cultures than just, you, yeah. you know, the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Captain America, which I still love. But I, I love that, you know, we've got... Um, you know, even Oscar Isaac, who is, uh, I think, has, you know, is of Hispanic descent. Uh, I think maybe Guatemala. I, I, I looked it up at one point. I, I, I don't want to speculate anymore, but I know he's sure. um, not, you know, just Caucasian. And I think I love having Layla as like a more, cause she is Egyptian and she's like from there and like is even the one like kind of being the guide a little bit when they're there and Mark's there and stuff. I just think. Uh, and I agree, her costume was just really cool. It was kind of like a mini, like a, like a more uh, streamlined version of Falcons, a little bit. Yes, just like how the wings worked a little bit. But I thought it was like, like it looked more practical than his too. Like it looked like that it actually is. looks easier to fight in than what Falcon has, just yeah. because of like how giant those wings are. Like you, you kind of have to like look where you're swinging. Hundred uh, percent. Hers is a little more lethal and like a little more compact, and, and it feels like yeah, exactly. And um, I, loved it. Yeah. I love that her uh, is, is t- I can't say the name Tauret, but the uh, her her uh, avatar, her, the, yeah, the, the god that she's the the hippo. Lady. Yes, which is awesome. And it was very funny her talking through those dead bodies. Like that was just like a little moment of humor that would happen. It was. Like especially when she was following uh, Ethan Hawke's character around. Yeah, uh, and like the, there was like dead bodies like popping up and being all like expressive like she would yeah. be. Is that was good. Yeah. No, it was good, and um, I, I also think about the I am moment. I think it's also Layla kind of figure, realizing that hey, maybe there's something bigger than me that it, other than just. I mean, we don't. I'm not sure we get a hundred percent of her backstory, what she was doing, but it felt like she was kind of like a treasure hunter, artifact finder. Yeah. So it feels like it's something like she's she's found a bigger calling now, and. and I think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. The thing that kind of bothers me, or did bother me, was obviously I love that we have Amit versus Khonshu, a giant kaiju fight next to a pyramid. Yep. Pretty yep. badass. I love that we finally get Moon Knight back, and we have a mix between, like you said, the alternating between Moon Knight and Mr. Knight, yes. and even the Scarlet Scarab coming in. I think all that action was really great, and like some of the best action we've gotten, period, yes. on the Disney Plus MCU side. And it felt very movie like. I was in. It's while while could be considered clever. I'm not sure how I felt about what we now know as Jake Lockley taking over the body to whip everyone's mm-hmm. ass. Because it's like, well, mm-hmm. I get it, and it kind of creates yeah. mystery for whatever comes next. But this show, but we've mentioned before, at least in my opinion, the show is called Moon Knight, and I want to see Moon Knight do cool things. And personal preference, I want to see the good guy with the bad guy's ass just what all that's what i always want i would agree with you i it like it's it it could be viewed as like a cheap way out of of the of the conflict because like it is it happens at the moment where like he's about to die like you know he's seconds away from getting a staff blast to the face or whatever's yeah. gonna happen <laughs> to him and, and, yes. and um and then we have another moment like we had in the first episode where he blacks out and then he wakes up and he defeated everyone very, very efficiently and very like like, like completely defeated them. Um, and it was like I I was expecting to have kind of this like almost Super Saiyan moment with like Jake Lockley, 
like yeah. this thing where like he's like i've got you now and then he switches and he's like who is you know it's just like everyone has no idea what they're looking at and we get to see jake lockley be jake lockley yeah um can you imagine like a bat like his costume is maybe even harder and like i, was, I say that, i say awesome. harder and like like meaner looking like a meaner version I, of that's Moon what i was really wanting to i want to see jake lockley i wanted to see his costume i wanted to see exactly. what exactly like that exactly. was what i was really like kind of anticipating um but to be fair the end credit scene was amazing it and was amazing completely surprised me i had I, I the whole time i'm thinking like when it goes to the white limousine i'm like is this is this gonna be wilson fisk like that was my first oh, thought like, like, i knew as soon like, as like i saw like the hands i was like this is jake lockley fixing a walk out harrow like i knew like i was like thank god they did something here yeah i, I didn't and, and seeing like, conchu speaking in spanish too that threw me off completely that did that did throw me off a little bit but i suspected like i i because he's a he's a cabbie in the comics and he's not his, he's not he's not a spanish-speaking cabbie but i was like i bet well, money they're gonna give him i bet they just did that even just to lean into his own background a little 100 percent makes so much sense it it's does. amazing great great job. And it's, a, it's a different like it's a different accent, a different language. I mean, it makes total sense to do I will that. Say Jake Lockley does not sound at all like a Hispanic name. Um, oh no, it doesn't. Of, like the the name it sounds like very no. New York-y. Like, I mean, even name. I mean Stephen Grant doesn't sound English or or British. You know, like it sounds. Yeah, I feel like Doctor Grant. May, that, maybe think, Grant does, but Stephen is definitely fairly not British. Stephen Hawking and all you that. Think, well, I guess you're right. Maybe I'm just don't know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> But have you not studied I, British no, name nomen culture and, and names enough? I guess I guess you need not. To do your homework before you come to I, the podcast. I know that's what I know clearly, um, especially at the beginning of this podcast, right? It on my ass for my face. Um, <laughs> so no, but I I love seeing Conchu in his like suit, like he's in a suit. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and you get the reveal of Jake Lockley, and it looks like he just looks like a like a dirt bag like mafia guy. It's yeah, incredible. He looks like a mafia hitman. He really yeah, does. And it's and, incredible. Uh, you know, I saw some um, some online theorization that uh, in episode one, when the blackouts happened, that was actually Jake Lockley and not Mark or Steven. Um, so, like, when Steven Total, is I make out, sense. When he first finds the scarab and he keeps blacking out and has, like, blood all over him with the scarab in his hand and stuff. Yeah. No, uh, it totally makes I, sense. I think that would make sense. I think even when we see later on when he's, like, fighting those hoodlums of of the egyptian streets and he like oh, kills yeah. one of them or something and he's like oh my god and it was like that was obviously jake lockley because yeah that one like, definitely wasn't was. me it wasn't me and we knew there was something because there's like the that's, yeah. that's another kind of a plot issue i had kind of i can kind of justify is when they're in the mental hospital mental hospital and we see that third tomb shaking like and like it's like oh that's yeah. jake lockley in there he's trying to get out something's happening right. and so you kind of wonder how they can achieve balance but maybe it's because Mark and Steven knew of only them, only of those two personalities, so they can achieve balance between yeah. themselves, I guess. So maybe that's or how you get around. Maybe of it. you could argue that like they couldn't achieve balance with three hearts, but once one of them was removed, then there was only two to balance. But mm. we only saw two on the. I, don't, I mean, yeah, it's like I, I don't know, like it, that. That I agree. It feels a little bit like a plot hole of like I'm not sure. They, and and. To be fair, maybe not that critical of one. One that does, that is pretty easy for me to let go of and not. It's really magic wrong. mumbo jumbo that can be easily explained. At, at the point that we're in, like the Egyptian afterlife, they can kind of do whatever they want. I'm even yeah. like, like so, like Mark Stephen falls in the sand and turns into stone, and like Mark just runs out and touches him, and then they, and then Mark turns to stone, but then they both unturn to stone, and the gates open. And it was just like I have no idea why any of this is happening. In hundred percent, like, but it lore works. Or the the just the all whatever i'm like I, I don't get it it seems a little inconsistent but i don't really care i don't and that's like a beautiful thing where he's like hey you're my you're my actual only superpower which is again talks about how you talked about how mental health you know like that maybe not considered an illness but it's it's you know it's what it is it's it's uh, your body trying to protect you in some in a lot of ways yes. you know so your mind trying to protect you from in in it's you you're going into flight or flight and your mind finding a way to get you to safety even if exactly. that means creating a whole other personality for you to hide behind yeah and i think the way they did that i mean i actually got emotional during that moment just because i mean they just did a good job the acting and everything and 
it's funny again, like just, oh, you, you, you didn't hear my speech it's oscar you know? isaac and oscar isaac i think oh, that's yeah. what's beautiful is like the most emotional parts of this show were oscar isaac acting against himself and which it's which you feeling, wonder it's so i like, feel like they're there feel, yeah you know like i i it makes me think of those like adam sandler and ben stiller movies where it was adam sandler um Eddie Murphy, like, Adam Sandler, Eddie, like where they play themselves, but like yes. one of them's in a fat suit or, always, or something. Yeah. yeah, and it's just they're always just so bad, and it's just there's no difference between the characters other than the costume. You know what I mean? It's just right. it's Adam Sandler in a wig and in drag, or it's Adam Sandler just as Adam Sandler. Uh, and there's no and other I, differentiation, and I feel like the differentiation we got between Mark and Steven, and there was a few times where we saw them transform on screen, like. We were on his face and I think the camera like was swinging around him as he went from like Mark to Steven and just the, the, the gradient of that transition of his face was just so well done on an acting level. I just thought it's just, it was, it was, I think, I hope he is nominated at the very least for some Emmys for this because I think he should be. No, he hundred percent should be. And the big thing too is um, for me, I think it's super wise for Marvel to be like, hey, this is the character we want you to do because I think Oscar Isaac, granted, he has done, you know, uh, Apocalypse and X-Men, and X-Men, X-Men Apocalypse, and he has been yeah. Poe also, but I feel like this in particular, Marvel's a big machine, and there's going to be an expectation that if you do one thing, you're probably going to do more than one thing, right? And I think I that... I assume that he's probably contracted for at least one or two other projects well they've they've said there's this they've said he's only been contracted for these first six episodes and there's even a thing too like they've it 100 percent. and i think it's like a thing where they've contracted for six but there's like under the table handshakes like hey if you're gonna do this we we know if you enjoy it we want you to be in there for the long haul well and there was some sorry go ahead well i'll say the last thing on that that little particular thing is that uh, the Emmys have like a thing, apparently, from understand where you can't be nominated for limited series if you have more than one season in the works ever. And Marvel has put it up for nomination for a limited series where they they have not for something like Loki or whatever. Meaning that if they've it, already but, put it up for nomination for yeah for limited series. So I mean, oh. meaning that if unless they want to like go back on like their word, then they like with the Emmys. Right. Then they won't have a season two, but like, what does that mean? Like, could it be called Moon Knight and Scarab, and that's see, that's a different show? Like, what does that mean? Yeah, though? or we, you do know? we get like the one of those like big crossovers that people, Heroes for Hire or something with Moon Knight. Yeah, I mean, like that's it, I, like the, loopholes I did on Reddit that, and, and I didn't check it for myself, but at one point it was like when they were advertising for the final episode, it was said series finale, and then it's another point it started saying season finale. Yes, um, and that was just some verbiage that people were noticing had changed, and so that is also just slightly interesting. I mean, it could mean absolutely nothing, you know what I mean? Hundred um, percent. But it also also is like, but why would you change it if it means nothing? Kind of thing. I thought that same thing too, and I think that might also be marketing, like, hey, sure. season finale. It's like a it's a general term that people can understand versus sure. series finale where people might be somewhat confused. I don't know. But I mean, I, that also, that crossed my head too. So I I don't know the answer to it, but I totally suspect, I mean, again, werewolf by night is moon Knight's first appearance. And that comes out. We're going to get more moon Knight. We're going to get more. Knight, And it will either, it might be, you know, again, in the black Knight movie or something like that, or telling you, it could be blade. I'm, yeah, I would. No, I would. It would fit. I mean, we're getting into that really kind of like gothic horror side of like Marvel, of like yeah. gods and mummies and werewolves and Love vampires it. and like. Love it. I agree. I agree. It, it's again. It's like that. It's like what we got with Guardians, which is this like cosmic um, adventure, like sci-fi stories that felt just like they could have been a, a cos a sci-fi adventure action adventure movie on its own. And now I feel like even with Moon Knight, like this could have worked if it was just its own thing. If this was almost yeah. like an, an yeah. invincible kind of thing where like we just came up with this idea and we're making it. And it's like, you know, it, it's it's tagging onto the, the trend of superheroes, but its own thing. Um, and I think I, I want to get more of that in there for sure. Um, 
Yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I think like right now, just as as we've um, with announcements or whatever, dream dream event, Dark Avengers movie right now is mm. Blade, Black Knight, Moon Knight, a potential Ghost Rider, like whoever Ghost yeah. Rider is. Like that to me is a great four person team. Yeah, yeah. And that would be so fun. And like that's like, and they're fighting. Like you can imagine if Blade comes out again. I I just have a feeling. Don't quote me here. But I feel like Blade is going to be, like, Black Knight's origin story, basically. Like, the Ebony Blade is tied with vampires, all these kind of things. I just have a feeling they'll be involved. I could see... It feels like Marvel is more and more, like, doing these, like, two main character plot. Like, even Doctor Strange, we know that Scarlet Witch is a major player in this movie. And, like, it, it very much picks up right where we left her off with WandaVision. And I think the more and more we're just getting these, like, interwoven stories, I kind of expect more and more to get Blade's standalone movie is also Black Knight's origin it's, story. It, and, and, like, I mean, I would imagine that, like, when we start doing X-Men, how many different characters are going to weave into each one of those X-Men stories and movies and stuff? Like, I have no idea. Like, it's going to be interesting to see how they do it but i just feel like they're at this point where the universe is established enough if you can make it work narratively introducing another character with another character's like movie works really well it does i mean and I, I mean there was a comment made by kevin feige i want to say post um age of ultron where the kind of like when civil war kind of started and they said hey we're going to kind of start having these movies where we're kind of getting people's origin stories in whatever sequel movie and just kind of having all these ensemble pieces. I mean, Civil War, we had both Black Panther and Spider-Man in that one. Right. We have Love and Thunder, like you mentioned, with um, the Guardians coming in. Um, the we have a tar- Yes, exa- 100%. The Marvels. Yeah, and yeah, and we had the Marvel. We have Miss Marvel coming out relatively soon, next couple of months, actually. I think it's June or July or something, maybe July. Mm-hmm. Um so we're getting a lot of that, and I, I'm I'm all here for that, and I, I love the idea of like having these Disney Plus shows kind of kickstarting that yes. process, especially if they're as good as Moon Knight is. I will say one other problem I had, and this kind of is tied to the idea of um, uh, choice. I'm not I've never been a huge fan of this. Sometimes it can be done correctly, but after the Jake Lockley um, blackout. We see him at the, at the tomb. He's fixing to kill Harrow. And there's the whole thing of like, no, I choose to not kill because you don't have any power over me, Conchu. And it, it's kind of, you mentioned this earlier. It, it's very unclear how much Conchu has power because it feels like whenever like Stephen Grant was in control or whatever, it feels like Conchu is, he's, he's more like he's like the dad who can't control the kid and he's like no you need to do this and he's always like i'm not going to do that i'm gonna do something else but then all of a sudden it makes it feel like conchu has been making mark and steven do all these horrible things i never really got that impression and so having the having the final thing where he like doesn't kill harrow because of this choice he wants to make it, it feels a little bit out of arc for me because also the arc has been trying to merge these two together right it, it, it didn't really land with me. And, and the, no, and the Jake Lockett thing helps like, me. I feel like if they had had some scenes in the earlier that was like clearly Conchu compelling Steven to do something yes. specific, kill someone yes. or, or something, that would have worked better as an ending. Yeah, I mean, and two more things. Like if, you, if you're going to have the Jake Lockley block, like blackout, then he needs right. to kill Harrow in a cool way. Again, the after credit scene did a lot for me because it was cool. It was like a hit, and you got to see the third right. personality. It's like, okay, well, Harold didn't fucking make it, or at least he appears he didn't make it. So I'm down with that. Um, I was okay with that. But, like, with Khonshu fighting Amit, which also I love seeing the alligator Egyptian demon lady. Pretty cool. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, when she's getting I loved, sucked. I love when she was eating the souls. That was really cool. Oh, yeah. And it, it didn't really address that. It felt that. very mummy like just it, like it, souls coming up and going in her mouth it just felt very mystical and it did yeah. and like you also kind of wonder well two things like in that moment when they're they're kaiju fighting when she's getting sucked into like the basically into hero yeah. there's a moment there an opportunity perhaps to have Conchu say one more fuck you line and like uppercut her or something to kind of like yeah. send her, you know, just to, it's a, a final fuck sure. you. It's like, that's the yeah. best kind of cool shit to do in a fight. And they could have had some like justice oriented one liner. 
Yeah, that, like, something. They've been they were like they were fighting about like what is justice or how they handle justice. I feel like hundred percent. There's there's, and there's it, some there's there's a line there's a one liner just that was yes. left on the floor there. Yeah, something. Let me get you know you can just be bare bones like let, judge need, this. No, not something. Like that. Well, I mean like need an assist. You know, bam, something. Yeah, you know, like yeah. you know there's yeah, something. No, yes. <laughs> there's something there I that could have been. Your honor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something, something, you know, but yeah, out of order, your honor. Um, but there, there's, a, there's something there, but it's, you, you know, that. like you should have just done the, the law and order sound. Jun, jun. I, mean, like <laughs> I, I would have loved it. It'd been great. If this whole thing was a ploy for a law and order episode yeah, opening. Yeah, oh, a, yeah. a, a, a long cold open. Jake Lockley is one of the detectives on law and order. I would die. I'd <laughs> probably be so happy. Um, but the law and order is canon. It's not an actual TV show. And the MCU law and order is like just law and order is actually an MCU spinoff. That was the reveal. I would. It was the I would. Original MCU. And, they, and they're and they're and the next <laughs> the next title card is like all fifteen seasons now on Disney Plus or whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think there's like 30 seasons. I'm sure there is. Yeah, I was trying to be like conservative a little bit because I didn't know, but um, but yeah, no, it's like that. That kind of bothers me. The the idea that you don't get like a final fuck you kind of thing to the to the bad sure. guy. Yeah, that's and valid, yeah, yeah it, that stuff's always bothered me. And like, if you're going to do cool stuff, like make it. You know, there's always like five percent cooler you can do. You know, and mm-hmm. um. But that is what it is. There was something else, though. I said two things. Oh, the other thing is, this is ties like something Travis I think brought up when we talk about Eternals. Mm. But is the giant um, in Eternals the giant celestial coming out of the Earth? Like now we've no. seen what appears to be two giant kaiju beings fighting next to a pyramid, and people's souls yeah. being sucked out. There's and a the nice lot of thing. yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of there's a lot of these big like what the fuck moments happening on planet earth in the mcu and you wonder are they going to address all these things like i mean like what's the i mean it's interesting it is yeah no i i think it will be we we definitely need to see the world react to these events and i'm sure that's probably coming in whatever the next avengers level like team up movie is i would assume yeah Um, just in the kind of the same way when we when we get age of ultron you know the 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 setup, a part of the inciting incident of the uh, Sokovia Accords, is us flashing back to all these moments that have happened in the recent movies, and like, yeah, you know, this happened then, this happened that, you know, like that. That I, I assume we'll probably get something along those lines. It's interesting, and like, I mean, again, mentioned this earlier. We're watching Doctor Strange tonight, and this episode yes. will come out later. So, I felt like in the before these reviews drop, and we're fixing it off here, literally in a minute. Mm-hmm. That this might help us with the future of the MCU. I don't know if I feel that way now, based on reviews. Sure. Um, so I'm curious, like, to where these all these things are going to culminate yeah. in, because you know we heard recently Kevin Feige and them are on a, a retreat, like they do every couple of years or every year, yeah. and they're mapping out the next ten years of the MCU. So, right, it feels like we're in there for the long haul. Everybody, we got some content to be on the lookout for. Indeed. Daniel, how can our listeners write into us? Listeners, you can write into bit.ly slash two-for-one mail. Let us know what you thought of Moon Knight. How did you feel about the big reveal at the end? How did you feel about Jake Lockley and how they handled him? Uh, And how did you feel about the show in general? Let us know, bit.ly slash two-for-one mail. And, of course, if you can't hit up our bit, you can always go to youtube.com slash two-for-one studios and comment in the comment section below. We would love to hear your thoughts. Um, let us know again if you liked it, if you didn't like it, and what you're looking forward to the most in the MCU. Um, Daniel, it was a pleasure. I'm I'm really excited. I'm glad we talked about Moon Knight, and um, honestly, I, I overall just had a great six weeks with it. And there's like a highlight of my week, Absolutely. and I I'm so looking forward to seeing where Moon Knight comes up next. And again, it goes back to like Shang Chi being in the MCU, and all these other people. These new, we're finally getting people that I care about, and I I want to see meet all these other people, and it's exciting to be. I think Phase Four is finally starting to deliver what I always wanted um, from it, and yeah. it's it's fun to see where they go next. Great. Um, so my name is Donovan Thompson. I'm Daniel Wingfield, and we have spoken. <laughs>